Time. Thousands of firefighters continue to try and gain an upper hand on this big fire, which is now more than 44,000 acres. In Big Sur, weather was not on their side today. Action News reporter Caitlin Conrad is live at Pfeiffer State Park at Cal Fire's base camp there with the latest for us. Dan, Aaron, conditions have changed for the first time on this fire. They're getting a westerly wind. That hasn't been the case in the past. I want you to take a look at the hillside behind me. We can actually see smoke coming over it from the big part of the fire. Uh, that hasn't been the case in the past. And this is one of the hillside that the that the hot shots that are staying at this camp are having to trek up and down so that they can put the fire lines in on the fire. And those lines are so important because this change in weather conditions has them on high alert. This is the first time the fire has experienced westerly winds since the beginnings. Until now, wind hasn't been a big factor, but now things are changing. Firefighters are on alert. We're taking a look at some of our strategies deep within the fire area to make sure that our containment lines that we have in place are holding. Crews were prepared for this, and over the last 24 hours, they've been doing a lot of backburns to secure their lines. Where the fire is now is it's in that transition point, somewhere behind the Elsa Ranch, uh, Pico Blanco, uh, areas that have burned historically literally every big fire. Frank Penny, Chief Emeritus of the Big Sur Fire Brigade, says this is when the historic fuel breaks are going to come into play. And what we were planning on is to develop a line that was historically developed in a marble cone fire, make that line strong enough that they can burn back from that into the forest itself and create a, a, enough burned area to protect the, the homes on the west side of the highway. The, the fire has already destroyed more than 50 homes, scorched huge swaths of the canyons here, and hurt local businesses during the busy season. Uh, on a normal August day, uh, we wouldn't be able to be standing here having this conversation. Uh, we'd, we'd get run over. Varies. Yeah. Uh, you can get pastries at the store. Whatever you'd like. Okay. Rick Aldinger with the Big Sur River Inn says their business alone employs 75 people, some who've lost their homes to the fire. Uh, a couple of those people here on our own staff uh, at this point don't have a place to go back to. And so uh, now more than ever, they, they, they need the stability that uh, that paycheck and this job offers them. Bringing people down to Big Sur and down on Highway 1 is a sensitive issue. You know, we have a lot of people that are residents here. They don't want to see tourists traveling on Highway 1, but obviously those businesses are hurting. Highway 1, very busy right now. We've got a lot of fire traffic. That's one of the reasons that Pfeiffer has been opened up as a base camp so that these guys don't have to go back down Highway 1 to Carmel Valley or to Toro Park. Dan, Aaron. All right. Thank All you right. very much. Thanks, Caitlin. Want to go to Carmel Valley now. Firefighters have been doing backburns to keep fire away from homes, specifically in Kashawa. Action News reporter Bianca Beltran live right now with more on that. Bianca? Right, Dan, it was a very hairy situation. Now, we're at live at Lorellis Grade right now, and from here you can see some new smoke, some of that coming from those backfires set by firefighters. Now, Today, we got to look at them in action, but the flames were not far from those homes, which is why evacuation orders are still in place in Kashawa. Just sticking it out as long as I can. Jeff lives in the Kashawa area of Carmel Valley. His wife and two-year-old daughter left when evacuation orders were issued over the weekend, as dozens of bulldozers and fire trucks moved in to get in front of the Sobranus wildfire. And they cut off the power to some of us, so our wells went out you know we can't pump our own water at our places so that kind of bummed me out mm -hmm. but you can still put up a fight <laughs> firefighters are using flames in that area to push the wildfire back and while it's under control tuesday's map of the fire shows how hot spots can jump ahead because the embers carried over the perimeter of the fire to another location it then started burning in advance of the fire it's those type of conditions that we have to be very cautious about because it can increase the uh, rapid spread of the fire. Last night, many residents actually stuck around to watch the backburns. They say they could see the flames from their houses over here. And tonight, firefighters are going to continue that work, doing some more controlled burns on the other side of these ridges here, going section by section to connect the dots and push the fire south. This is what that looks like. Helicopters called heli torches are throwing fire at designated areas to create a line to stop the fire from going any closer to Carmel Valley. 
And as we stood on a hill near the entrance to Sky Ranch Estates, firefighters told me that there is a gap between those flames and the flames of the Sobranus wildfire, but that gap is closing quickly. Dan. All right, very good. All right, Bianca, thank you. Thank you very much. Big part of the firefight there. And air quality becomes uh, or has been a major issue. We had a rough go today. This is a live view from our Skycam 8 Salinas. It's easy to spot the smoke. Air quality for Carmel Valley was actually unhealthy. That's one of the first times we've actually had that designation when we get, you know, we've heard moderate, we've heard good, unhealthy. Shift in wind direction playing a big role in that. We want to bring in Ferdinand Holum into the conversation because he's been tracking this as he has since this fire started. Not a good day out there today. No, uh, you felt it if you were outside in a lot of our wind protected valleys. Now we've got those westerly winds and look at this. I, I shot this earlier. This was about four o'clock. You can't see the valley floor. You cannot see across to the pinnacles. But watch, here's where we look at live right now. All of a sudden, look at that, cleared, cleared out there. And that's basically because of the sea breeze. But again, we've got the westerlies working, and that's going to help to transport the smoke back in the valleys tomorrow. You said it earlier, we had actually a very unhealthy air quality in Carmel Valley. Now it's just at the unhealthy level all the way down the Salinas Valley, moderate up toward Hollister, moderate as well. But where we do have the good sea breeze as well on the Monterey Peninsula up toward Aptos, Watsonville, Santa Cruz, all in the good area right now. As far as the winds go, we saw them talking about it earlier where we've got the westerly winds. Again, that's going to help push some of the smoke down in the valleys. These aren't like super, it's not a big wind event, but nonetheless, the westerlies will actually push the smoke in our valley. Actually, in early in the morning hours, we could even still get a little bit of a southerly wind as well, which will push some more smoke into the uh, Monterey Bay area. But then the afternoon comes along, the sea breeze picks up, and then it kind of flushes out our valleys, which is actually pretty nice, or most of our valleys, not all of them. And our forecast for tomorrow for our firefighters, west-northwest wind about 5 to 15 miles per hour, and then temperatures mainly 70s to about 92. Again, above the marine layers where we've got the 90s, where we have the very, very low relative humidities, anywhere from single digits to about 10%, and then where we're we get the marine layer, we get some uh, recovery of the relative humidities and they're uh, closer to the ocean, as, of course, as you would expect. Back to you guys. All right, thanks very much. Uh, we're sort of in event season here on the Central Coast. Uh, one of the big events coming up is the Salinas Valley Half Marathon. Organizers say as of now, their event will go on as planned. The race is scheduled for Sunday, which is August 6th. The half marathon starts at the Soledad Mission. It ends at Pisano Winery along River Road along the wine trail. Organizers say they plan to monitor air quality. They'll make a final decision, go or no go, on Friday.